Hi everyone, my name is Dustin Meyer and welcome back to Impact Photo. Today we're going to talk a little bit about speed editing in Adobe Lightroom. Okay, so today's um, objective is to do a quick edit so that you guys can uh, spend less time trying to sort through your photos and more time doing the stuff that you want to do, which is perfecting your images or spending more time with your clients or whatever it might be. Um, but uh, actually, I prefer to be spending more time uh, watching videos on YouTube or playing video games. So <laughs> no, I love my clients and I love doing what I do. But at the same time, you got to make sure that you're not wasting too much time doing little like nitty gritty stuff. So um, so let's just dive right into it. So what I do is the first thing um, I start out in grid mode and the hot key for that is the letter G as in go and that brings you into uh, thumbnail mode so um, and I also start out with my thumbnails fairly small uh, the reason being is I like to get a good overview of all the pictures that I've taken uh, this was a senior portrait session that I did earlier today um, the reason why I look at it this way is it gives me a good idea of what images might be good and which ones may not so with any further ado, without any further ado, let's just do it. So I'm looking at a bunch of these up here at the top, and it appears to me that most of these, because they're action shots, are uh, going to be a little tricky to try and pull off a good-looking picture. So I think what we'll do is start by um, selecting a series where I can see the face, and then I'm going to do a shift-click to select them all, and then I'm going to hit the letter N, as in nighttime, so the N key, and that's going to bring me into overview mode and it'll enlarge those thumbnails and I'll be able to take a look. And let's see, uh, this one's good, so I'm gonna click it to highlight it and I'm gonna hit the letter P as in Paul to pick it or give it a white little flag as you see right there. I've also got my settings in preferences to automatically advance to the next photo whenever I flag an image and that just kinda helps move things along. At this point, what I do is just use the arrow keys to navigate between the ones that I like. So that's another good one. That one, maybe not. That one's pretty good, I like that. And then of course, um, we'll do this one too. So once I have that, then I'll hit the G as in go key again to go back. And then I'll just start selecting the next group of images that look fairly similar. So hitting the letter N key again as in nighttime. And here we go, these all look pretty good. Some of them are a little blurry. Of course, you guys are getting to see how sometimes pictures don't exactly look the way you want them to but that's okay, we're all human, right? There we go. And as you can see, things are picking up. So usually, uh, depending on the thumbnail size, I try to select no more than 10 at a time because I still wanna look at them in nice and big. Whoops. Uh, if you are in uh, what's called a light table mode and you've got a whole bunch of Im images selected and you accidentally uh, flag uh, an image, it will flag every image like that. So uh, I'm gonna do Command Z to undo that flag and then hit the letter N key again. So let's see, that's a good one. This girl loves her dog, which I don't blame her, it's a cute dog. But this way, of course, it's taking a little bit longer because I uh, wanna make sure that you guys actually get to see what I'm doing without me just like speeding along too fast but I am trying to be as fast as I can here so you guys can get a decent idea of how quickly this can be done. You can also uh, click the uh, little X here to get rid of images that you know are just gonna be like a distraction and that'll just automatically unselect those. And now these are really dark so I kinda have to just imagine what they'll look like when I brighten them. Let's see, nope. And what I try to do is get at least one good picture or at least the best picture out of the bunch before I deselect. Sometimes I have to remember where I left off. Now in a sequence shot like that, I will select more than one because sometimes, you know, I'll still narrow it down to one later, but for now, 
we're just going to keep it in the loop here. Got too many hot spots on the face. Uh, maybe that one, just in case. And as you can see here, we are flying through these fairly quickly. I'm picking both of those because one's zoomed out a little bit further in case they want to purchase like an 8x10 or something along those lines. You know what? That one does not need to be picked. She's half blinking. The other thing you can do that I find that's really helpful is uh, you can size your thumbnails to where it's a little bit easier to manage and that way all you have to do is just pick like one row at a time so there is there's eight shots right there and that way you can remember uh, where you left off <laughs> that one's pretty funny Now, uh, what you're probably asking is, you know, since I'm making multiple selections here, do I go through and do a second round of editing? And the answer to that question is yes, because like I said, sometimes I'm going really quickly and I will select two images that I'm not quite sure which one looks the best. So I'll leave them both in the mix and then I will go through them again. See, we are almost halfway through here. We're doing pretty good. So maybe I'll add some music track to the background or something so that you guys don't feel too bored. And sometimes you might wonder, well, this thumbnail is a decent size for you know overall composition and stuff, but is it enough to make sure that it's sharp? Uh, again, I usually go back through that during the second round because if I, uh, for me personally, if I start really like getting into the nitty gritty of images while I'm trying to do the first round of editing, then I will uh, completely, my whole editing process will come to a halt because it is just, uh, one of those things that I just spend way too much time trying to uh, trying to make sure that everything looks you know absolutely perfect, and then um, that's the that's the part of me that I really want to reserve for um, you know doing like the retouching and all that kind of stuff. Any other like image enhancements? Oops. Yeah. Do do. So for those of you guys that, you know, sometimes worry about, oh my gosh, I shot way too many photos. How am I, you know, I'm going to spend so much time editing down all this stuff. Well, once I started doing it like this, it's, um, it just got so much easier and so much like just not as daunting of a task. There we go. And that one's similar, but we will go back and compare them side by side. And when it is time to do side-by-side -side comparisons, just do the same thing I'm doing where, again, I'm using the letter N. And what that does is you can also use this icon down here too, the survey view, that's what it's called. So uh, grid view and then survey view are the two that I uh, go back and forth between. So for those of you guys that are wondering, I do like to shoot kind of a mix between uh, smiling and not smiling. And <laughs> one reason is it gives their... Um, their cheek muscles a break so that they don't look like they have locked jaw by the end of the session. And two, uh, sometimes I like the look without a smile because it opens up the eyes. Um, plus it just adds some more variety to all the different shots they can choose from. And most of the time, 
everybody is just kind of brainwashed into um, always smiling for a picture. And it's one of those things where it can really kind of uh, surprise them when they see how good they look when they don't smile all the time. So it's all about just giving people choices and opportunities to uh, try stuff out. I mean, if they're paying you to be there with your camera and they get dressed up and they do hair and makeup and all this stuff like we do, uh, I kind of actually like that lens flare. It looks kind of cool. Um, then, you know, why not get as much, you know, variety as you can get? There we go. And that was one of my special requests. I asked her to do that because uh, she just kind of had like that sort of personality where I think she could have sort of like a pseudo mischievous or mischievous kind of look. So, and of course we always want, you know, one where just a decent, good, straight on smile and then one without a smile. So, and some of you guys might be thinking, okay, well, some of those were dark. Some of those were bright, you know, when is he going to hit that? And so it's, um, Again, I don't really mess with that until it's time for me, like once I'm done, done, done with the selections, because otherwise if I have too many extra photos in the mix and it becomes a distraction, then I'm never going to get through it all. There we go. And let's see, I was hoping that the ones where there's some sun coming through would work, but it looks to me like there's just way too much contrast. So... We're gonna go with these guys and take a look. Now, some of you may be asking, okay, well, these two are fairly similar. Why is he going with this one versus that one? This one, she seems just a little bit taller and it's a little bit more centered. Plus, I don't have to worry about cropping out this guy over here. So I am thinking towards the end goal, which is one, what would my clients like? Two, what, um, you know, how, how much additional editing time would it take if I included, um, you know, some of these extra ones in the mix. And so I am thinking about cropping. I am thinking about stray hairs. I am thinking about, you know, all these elements that normally I would be messing with later on. Let's see, we got a good variety of stuff here. So we'll grab a bunch of those, even though they're similar. So in a way, um, if there are two photos that are similar, um, I can avoid doing uh, additional unnecessary retouching by just taking that one out of the mix. Um, you know, after doing this for a while, you kind of get an idea of, you know, what parents will like, what the seniors, uh, what the clients would like. And um, just looking at the expressions here. So this one looks good. And the reason again is you know, they are my first priority. And my second priority is being able to present these images and then eventually deliver the images to them within a reasonable amount of time. Because another big part of my customer service is making sure that, you know, they don't have to wait around too long because, you know, you get them all hyped up, you take really good pictures and then they got to wait and wait and wait. And uh, unfortunately, in some respects, we do live in a... Uh, you know, immediate gratification type society, which is not bad. It's just that, you know, we have these tools available to us. So, I mean, why not, uh, you know, use them to your advantage? I mean, don't get me wrong. It usually took me forever to get through editing. I would dread it. Uh, and it's one of those times when I would just kind of cringe at the idea because I would just, I knew ahead of time that I was going to spend way too much time trying to go through all these especially if it was a really good photo shoot and I knew that we were going to get a lot of good stuff. Um, and that's also one of the reasons why some of us, you know, we do tend to overshoot, which is a term that I like to use when it means, you know, we just hold down the button and take a whole bunch of shots one after another, you know, in really fast, you know, succession. Uh, but it's because, you know, we're enjoying the moment. We're, you know, seeing good stuff. We want to make sure that we get really great pictures. Um, but then, at the end of all of it, we end up with a whole lot of stuff to go through. And you know what, that's okay, but you need to be able to adapt and make sure that your selection process is something that, um, you know, caters to that. Let's just take a look at this one on its own. Okie 
Doki. So we're getting close, folks. Sometimes I like to leave little silly ones in there just for fun, just to get them to laugh, you know. They may not order it, but it's always funny to just kind of have something in there that kind of breaks the ice during the photo review. Sorry, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll crack jokes during my photo sessions and you know try to get them to laugh. And the whole purpose of it is one, to get a really good natural smile because I feel like a smile while they're laughing is far better than just telling them, okay, smile, you know, because uh, again, we wanna get, you know, something that looks natural. And I think um, when it comes to pictures, you know, you wanna be able to look at a photo and, you know, if it's someone that you know, just be like, oh yeah, that looks just like her. That looks just like him, you know? And it's because you're getting them in a relaxed, natural state. Um, it's not always the uh, easiest thing to do, but I find that, you know, everybody loves a good joke. And so if you've got a few in your back pocket that you can use, then go for it. Um, if you don't, then sometimes you can just use a command on cue, be like, laugh, dang it. And next thing you know, they'll be laughing. So I'm laughing right now. So let's see here. Now, you know, again, this is not set in stone, this whole process. It's just something that I like to use. Uh, and I found that for me personally, it definitely helps me get through all of this as quickly as possible. Um, and so I think that, uh, again, it's just one of those things where you kind of owe it to yourself and to your clients to be able to do something in a quick amount of time. So I'm gonna go back, hit the G key or the grid mode key and then now that I've got them all uh, flagged the ones that I want I just filter them down by which ones are flagged and so as you can see I was able to take it down by a little over a third we had 348 starting and now we're down to 105 so now we just go through uh, through these again I know you guys are like oh Dustin come on do I really have to keep doing this okay so you like that one the expression's not great so what I'm gonna do is give it a one star rating In fact, you know what? I'm going to change that. I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to unpick. There we go. And again, I'm gonna select a large, wide range of images. And all I'm doing again to take out the, the, the non-keepers is I'm just using the U key, uh, which stands for unpick. And what that does is it just takes the flag thing away. And since we're filtering it by flag, it just automatically pulls them off the screen. I also kind of like the animation stuff too. It looks pretty cool. <laughs> Let's see here. 
Now, as far as like what differentiates, you know, what I pick and what I uh, let go of, it's mostly just about the posing and how it affects the shape of the body, the shape of the face. Again, also other little nuances, like when it comes to retouching, um, you know, is it something where chances are it's probably an image they're not going to pick? Um, or is it something where, uh, you know, it is something that they want to keep and it could be like, you know, a small stray hair or something that could be uh, let go of, you know, or taken care of fairly quickly. So let's see here. Plus it's also, you know, composition and personal preference and, you know, all those kind of things. So uh, really what it boils down to is, um, you know, what is your personal preference? Your personal taste, your creativity is going to be what dictates what stays and what goes. And also your experience working with that particular client, you know, what you feel is something that they're going to like. See, I'm looking here and I see a bunch of really similar stuff. See, we're already down to 75 photos. And we are just trucking along here. We got a, quite a few similar ones up here. See, I think I had too many of the silly ones in here, so I'm letting some of those go. I really only try to keep like maybe, you know, a couple of them because after a while, if you have too many photos that are silly, it starts to look like, um, it makes them feel awkward when they go through the photo review and you definitely don't want that. And we've got just a few more that are a little similar. See, I also try to keep a decent number of smiling versus non-smiling. But I also, you know, try to keep more smiling ones because I don't want it to be too serious. Like you definitely don't want parents to think that you're trying to make their kid look like a model um, because at least that that's my philosophy. You know, you want to make them look like them. So let's just go back here real quick and see how many we've got. So now we're down to 57. This is an extremely manageable number. And then now what you can do is some quick edits. And this is just for the proofing. This is not any like major retouching or anything. I just use the controls right over here just to do some really quick general overall corrections. Maybe warm it up just a little bit. So I use these quick bars. I stay out of the develop module as much as I can until it's time to actually start doing work on the photos. And I try to do batch adjustments because I really just want to minimize the amount of time I spend on each image because the purpose of this process is to just have these proofs ready for the client to view at their earliest convenience. So what I'm doing is I'm just selecting a batch and then going over here and just downing the exposure one or two clicks just to see how it looks. And one more time, I'm also trying to uh, stay away from being too nitpicky. I'm just kind of doing a really quick overall glance at how dark or bright the images need to be.
And there we have it. I think that is extremely manageable. We went from you know, like 348 photos down to 57. And now we're good to go. So after that, I just leave that alone and exit out and then I'm done. So within a 30 minute window, I'm able to go from 350 photos or so down to about 57 and it's a nice, easy, manageable number. Um, we're able to just go through and show the clients exactly what they are hoping for, something nice and simple. Um, otherwise, we're just you know taking out all the extra stuff that doesn't need to be in there. And within that 30 minutes, uh, you're done. And after that, you just you know select all and then export into a folder and then proof them the way you need to. Uh, we will go into another video about how to proof uh, using Lightroom because if you know you can keep more inside Lightroom, the better. Uh, that way, you don't have to keep switching back and forth between you know multiple different types of software and stuff. And we'll do an overview of how we do in-house proofing using Lightroom so that any of the adjustments and changes that you make in front of the client obviously are already going to be done in Lightroom and allows you to just pick a rep right back where you left off and get started on doing all the retouching and extra work, which we will cover in the next video. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Again, this is Dustin Meyer with Impact Photo and we'll see you soon. Don't forget to subscribe if you like our videos and also give it a like. And any questions you've got, just put them in the comments below and I'll answer them as best I can. Thanks so much guys and we'll see you next time. get your presets just right for each individual subject then for the rest of the time you're pretty much just going to be saying okay yeah apply this filter oh yeah apply it on this one too it's just a really really great piece of software so let's just jump